going here. You know, so I put dangers of soy in my search engine, and I find, you know, I find the article by by uh, Mary Egan, Enig and Nancy Fallon about uh, the dangers of eating soy with a subtitle of Cinderella's Dark Side. Anybody who questions whether soy should be eaten needs to just find that article, and trust me, you won't go near this stuff again. And so I went off of all soy. Oh, great. You know, the last frontier was the corn. And, um, and the corn just made me feel crummy. Uh, but, uh, but I did some research in corn, looked into the history of corn, found out how we developed it, when we developed it, the fact that it won't grow if you don't plant it so unnatural you can't even grow on its own, and that if you Google corn gluten meal, you find that it's a natural herbicide. It kills other plants. Okay, and I don't know of anything that we eat that's healthy for us that if you ground it up and put it on the plants, it would kill them. I think it's just the opposite. We would call it fertilizer. So corn has a long history, including inducing pellagra. Wherever it was introduced into a society, pellagra broke out, and Wikipedia's answer for that is wrong. I'll just be very confident about that. I, I need to write an addendum because they're wrong in their explanation for why, why pellagra broke out because corn is the fourth food that is capable of inducing villus atrophy. And in all of my research, there's only four of them that I know that induce the villus atrophy, the lesion we know is the lesion of celiac disease, and that is gluten, casein, soy, and corn. They all do it. And, um, and as you've read on my website, I think, you know, the thing that ties them together or literally binds them together is that those are the only four foods that we eat that we, that we make industrial adhesives from. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, and, and at that point, people go, "What now?" You go, "Well, who made who made?" I just gave it away, dog. Who made Elmer's glue? And they go, well, "I don't know." I say, "Well, can you picture an animal on the bottle?" They go, "Yeah, oh yeah, there's a cow on there. Yeah, it's Borden." You know, why would the why would the biggest dairy company in the world at the time, you know, come up with with Elmer's glue because casein was the, is is used as a glue. It's why it sticks to the lip. You know, gives you the milk mustache and it sticks to your tongue. Who wants to stick their tongue out after drinking a glass of milk? It sticks to the throat of kids and induces chronic pharyngitis and otitis media and strep throat. Um, and then it sticks to everything that it goes down, including your villi, when it leaves the stomach. And so it's a glue. We know that. We know that gluten is used to make wallpaper adhesive. But most people don't know that soy is used to make a super glue. And that it, your car, the interior parts of your car is put together with a soy-based superglue. Um, and including the rearview mirror being stuck to the windshield. That your rearview mirror, your metal or heavy plastic m mirror, is stuck to your windshield by a soy based superglue. They had to come up with something really powerful that would stick metal to glass and endure humidity and heat and temperature changes and everything else, and that is a soy based superglue. And it is the most powerful glue we eat. Well, corn, corn is the most well tolerated of the three, I mean, of the four. But, uh, and the best they can do with corn is to put cardboard boxes together with it. They're not going to be putting any metal together with corn-based glue, but if you put corn glue, you'll see that they use it in the paper industry. And, and as it shakes down, you know, that's exactly what, what we see as far as the tolerance level, and I personally think that soy is, is, is worse than gluten in many, many regards, and when you read that paper, you'll agree. But I had, a, I, had a, I had a doctor from the West Coast write to me and tell me that he thought my website was really interesting, that I had most everything on my website right, but he thought that it was absurd that I was using this glue analogy. <laughs> you know? And I went, it's, it's a fact. I said, everything that I said is a, I said, everything that I write is a fact that you, you know, we know gluten intolerance, no, not to lick envelopes, and, and that gluten is in adhesives, and we know that Borden made Elmer's glue out of casein. It's now all made out of synthetics. But you know it's not it's not casein anymore. But the paint on your wall is stuck to your wall by a by casein. It, it's the, it forms the basis for paint paints and and rosins and and all sorts of adhesives. And glue and and soy is uh, used in in, in innumerable forms of glue. That's what they were using it in before they decided that we need we had so much of it in this country we better start eating it. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a very it's a very real thing. So whether somebody gets it or not, it's a fact. It's not a it's not a, an opinion. <laughs> we use it as glue. Well, and then there's also the kind of the missing connection in medicine today of structure function relationship. If um, you know, if it's a square tire, it's not going to roll as well. Well, if you've got a, an extremely sticky adhesive substance and you're gorging yourself with massive quantities of it as a staple food. 
it would go to say that the properties of that food are going to have an impact on the on the structure of what it's of what it's of what it's touching. Exactly. And we know that's the that's the nature of glycoproteins, you know, which gluten and all these lectins are. They're a kind of a protein core with a with a with a glyco, you know, with a, a sugar attached to them. I describe them to my people, my clients in the exam room, or most of them are certainly less than medically inclined. Say, so just think of it as being like a tootsie pop, you know, in the center part of the protein and the and the uh, you know and the glycoproteins on the outside. I mean, the carbohydrates on the outside, and when it sticks to things, that you know, that's what it does. It sticks to things. Even bacteria produce lectins that cause them to stick to tissue. You, and that's why they infect them. And the interesting thing about them, of course, and people want to know, they say, well, it doesn't our stomach take care of that? And you go, it tries. It tries by dumping out a lot of acid. But the sad thing is these glues are not acid soluble. In fact, they're just the opposite. Right. Alcohol, alcohol soluble. soluble. Yeah, they're alcohol soluble. And the other thing that, that gets them off of your villi is vinegar. You know, and so they say, vinegar, really? I said, well, yeah, have you ever done wallpapering? Well, I know somebody who did. Well, what did they use to get the wallpaper glue off of the residue off of the wall? Well, they used vinegar and water. Yeah, isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you go, you go, yeah, that, there's the practical application for it, and this is one of the reasons why it's been tradition in some families and some cultures to actually either drink a little vinegar in between meals, you know, take a shot of the stuff, or at least douse your salad in it. You know, and so that's when I start telling them about Italians. I said, you know, Italians have they, – they, they say right now the official number of celiacs in Italy is 1 in 55, and they're a pasta-based society. I mean, how in the world have they survived? Well, they drink wine with every meal, and then they eat their salad after their meal, and their salad is soaked in oil and vinegar. The oil is to help to keep the gluten from attaching to the, to the villi. We know that's one of the purposes of fat is to protect the villi, and that the low-fat diet is one of the worst things man's ever invented, at least for the health of their villi. So the fat helps to protect the villi from the attachment of the of the gluten, and then the vinegar comes along and cleans off whatever whatever was there. And then the main purpose of, of fiber and roughage is to is to physically scrub your villi, get it off of there. And so the Italians have adapted uh, to their pasta-based society by doing a couple of simple things, and the Asians have adapted to their mistake, which soy was their mistake. Um, um, everybody wants to think that a Asians are healthier because they eat soy, but it's just the opposite. The traditional Asian diet has no gluten, no casein, or no corn in it. Soy was this, which actually...